Ah, what's up guys? Sam here. Welcome back to another video. Man, it's that time of year again. I was 14. It is just around the corner. So today I want to go over all the leaks and rumors. Like literally everyone I could find over the past year essentially that talks about what we're going to be seeing. And then also tell you how to get your hands on it first. So if you're excited for the video, drop a like down below. It seriously helps me and the channel out. And hit subscribe so you stay up to date. But first, before jumping into iOS 14 stuff, the fundraiser for the NAACP is still going on. We hit my original goal of $1,000 which makes me so genuinely happy, but I wanna see how much more we can raise. This is an organization that would have been around for over a hundred years, fighting for the political, economic, education rights, standing up for the black and brown people in our country, and I hope you guys can join me in supporting that. All right, so one of the toughest questions to ask every year is about device support. You know, it could be exciting or it could be terrifying. Is that baby iPhone that you've cradled, nursed from birth, is it gonna make it off life support for another year? The answer this year is yeah which I can't believe. Apparently every device supported on iOS 13 is also gonna be supported on iOS 14, which is good for that, right? That your device gets another year of support. It does lead me though to question how large of an update iOS 14 is gonna be. And that's been echoed a lot lately. That being said, there's still a lot of cool stuff that Apple's been working on that's likely gonna make it into the first beta. So I wanna talk about iOS 14 beta one, the feature set we can expect. And this year, I've got actual some numbers behind the rumors, like what percent chance is everything coming? So we actually have a couple things 100% confirmed. The first is this UI right here for new wallpapers. It actually blows my mind how much detail is inside of these. First of all, the interface looks really different, but you've got these four little circles at the bottom now. One appears to be for just like a blank background. One is a, a flat color. It's chosen from the wallpaper that you have selected. The third is a blurred version, and we actually have a, a look at what the blur is gonna be like as well. Very nice very subtle. And then obviously fourth is like your actual wallpaper in here. So that looks completely new, but Apple's not stopping there because once you go to actually select a wallpaper, they're introducing categories. So it's not just a total toss up for actually finding your wallpapers. You might be able to find what you're looking for easily. And it looks like for the first time ever, can't believe this is actually happening, but third party apps. So like Twitter can potentially bundle wallpapers inside of the settings app you can access them from there, which is super cool. Like this goes along with dark mode. I feel like we wanted third party wallpapers. I don't know, since people have been alive, since humans discovered fire. But those aren't our only screenshots here. We've also got our very first look at car key, which is a cool initiative Apple's working on to turn your phone into a key. Now this is something Tesla's been on for a long time, but this is gonna be built inside of the wallet app and we have a look at this UI as well. This is from the same person who shared that stuff before. They really took a couple for the team here, but they show a BMW that Apple's gonna be partnering with. And then essentially you can share this key in your wallet app with your family or even even with like a valet so they could just have access to the glove box and the essential functions of the car rather than be able to take this out for a joyride anywhere. This looks pretty cool, but I feel like it's gonna be one of those features that after a while you just don't notice and sometimes those are the best ones. Like your key could be in your pocket when you buy a new car. And I have to tell you, as somebody who's like used that Tesla feature regularly, it's incredible to just get inside of your car with your phone, drive, park and leave. And, and there's no middle step to like lock the car or find your key. Moving on to this next section, there's more than an 80% chance that all this stuff is going to happen because somehow an Apple employee shared a build of iOS 14 back in December of last year. So here's to these. First up here, Apple's working on a new augmented reality app. It's internally called Gobi or Gobi. Reminds me of Dobby from Harry Potter, and that's honestly all I can think of that probably should have been the real icon. But instead, the icon currently on iOS 14 looks like this. I mean, I'm not saying they saw the iUpdate logo and, and they got inspired, but that's kind of what it's looking like. The app is said to provide real world augmented reality experiences. So, you know, point your phone around the room, see something cool, and it's gonna be initiated by scanning particular barcodes. Now, we think Apple's at work on something much more complex because there's all these leaked QR codes and and some that we can't even scan that don't go to anywhere, but others go to Apple product pages. We have a feeling there's something pretty big up their sleeves that they're gonna announce. We just haven't quite cracked the code yet. Following that on the home screen, Apple's apparently been working on a brand new list view that functions similar to the Apple Watch. And you got a couple different sorting options. You have one by unread notifications, so you can just see your app icons that have those little badges that drive you absolutely crazy. You're recently used, and then also Siri smart suggestions. So Siri will be like, hey, you know, right around eight o'clock, you like to do your ab workout. 
I mean, I know we all do that on a daily basis. Widgets were also floated around for the home screen. And we'll talk about that a little bit more later. There is a possibility they're still coming, but much more recently, sources have said that's probably not gonna happen. Next step inside of the home app, there are a couple of tweaks here for home kit, which is the framework that allows all your smart devices to function. There's gonna be a new one, essentially night shift for lights. So, you know, obviously as a day, brightens up and darkens, the color temperature outside changes. Apple's working on a feature for your smart light bulbs that could essentially do the same thing. So really match the sun as it changes in color throughout the day, very subtly obviously between you know cooler blues, warmer oranges. It sounds really cool to me, I'd be down for it. There's also gonna be a new permanent audio output option for Apple TV. I think if you have some smart or AirPlay enabled speakers, so you don't have to select them every single time you wanna use them. The one new HomeKit feature that has me quite confused and a little bit afraid is for face recognition coming to HomeKit Secure Video. Essentially, you could put your delivery person's face or a family member's face, my understanding is, linked into your Apple HomeKit UI, and then you could be notified if that person showed up at your door. I mean, it sounds cool, but having facial recognition, I don't know if I'm ready for that, okay? That sounds a little bit too much like something that I don't want right now. Following that, we were talking about wallpapers earlier, and there is evidence that wallpapers are finally coming to CarPlay. It really reminds me of the original iPhone. You couldn't set a wallpaper, so it just looked like this. I mean, smash like down below, comment if you guys were part of the early days iPhone gang. I mean, I didn't have an I iPhone, I had an iPod Touch, you know, I wasn't making buka money like I am right now. Moving on to Apple Maps, Apple's adding a couple of new labels in here and also trying to get better integration with Apple stores. Like for example, you'll be able to see hardware repair availability in addition to checking how full the Genius Bar is for that day. Now, amid the whole virus situation, I don't think there's gonna be highly utilized at first, but they're also gonna show you if stores offer trade-in credit for a particular device. I thought it could maybe look like something similar to this. So, you know, you're browsing on an old iPhone SE. Apple's like, well, we got a new one that's got a better screen and a better camera, so maybe you should just upgrade now. There's also gonna be new highlights for couple seating, the child discount. I mean, I know we all have 15 children that just cost too much money. Private rooms and IMAX theaters are also gonna be disclosed on there. So you'll be able to see more clearly than ever before what exactly you want. Is it on Apple Maps? Accessibility has been really important to Apple for a long time and they're continuing the trend this year. One of the really cool features coming is they're gonna be able to, for those who are hearing impaired, essentially notify you through like a vibration or some banner on your phone. If they hear a siren or a child crying or maybe a dog barking, they can let you know that there's something going on that obviously you would have an inability to hear. I think that's really, really cool. And I mean, especially for like a siren or an emergency situation, that could save somebody's life. And on top of that, Apple's trying to make it so that hand gestures can be recognized on camera, probably for uh, ASL or something like that. And for earpods and AirPods, there's gonna be new audio accommodations for improved tuning there. And you might be able to run an audiogram on device now. Inside of the Find My app, which Apple just debuted on iOS 13, there are gonna be some pretty big changes here. In addition to a new tab likely for your stuff, because Apple's working on the secret project called the AirTag that we've seen a ton of leaks about. It's gonna be like a little Bluetooth tracking device you can stick on your skateboard or your backpack pretty much anywhere and not only see it on a map, but also find it in a room very specifically using augmented reality, like balloons will pop up on your camera. If, if you're near it, it's pretty cool stuff. So they're likely gonna introduce support for that, but also some other stuff, like alerts if somebody doesn't arrive when they said they would as expected, or conversely, if somebody leaves earlier than they were supposed to, you can get a notification about that and find mine now. And as mentioned to go along with the AirTag, there's a new headset mode that Apple's working on. So we've heard they're working on a mixed augmented reality, virtual reality headset. That is something we're not gonna jump into now, but they're working on support for that and Find My. And a lot of stuff sounds cool, but the number one thing I'm looking forward to that I just hope all of this makes it into iOS 14 is an upgraded version of the Messages app. I think Messages is probably the most used application on my phone aside from Twitter, which I'm not proud to admit. First is the ability to at mention someone, which is gonna be super helpful for group chats, especially people that may have things muted. I don't know if you're one of those people, but turn do not disturb off, please. This one I doubt will make the cut, but if so, could totally change the way people message. The ability to retract sent messages. Maybe you send something after a few too many drinks of water or a few too many 
well, of anything. And maybe you say something regrettable, maybe you send a photo you're not so proud of, we could get into the details later. In iOS 14, you might be able to unsend stuff, all right? Fascinated to see if this is gonna make. And also in group chats, there's gonna be a new typing indicator, so you can finally see if that person saw your message and you know, they're just, they can't ghost you because iOS 14 is gonna call them out. Finally, if you don't wanna reply immediately but don't wanna forget about a message, you'll be able to mark messages as unread. I use this in my email constantly or to flag things. If you can do this in the messages app, it's gonna really help me be on top of my messaging game. And then finally, the ability to set a slash me status update for your iMessage profile. So be like, oh, working on a video or typing for class, just something to let people subtly know what you're up to. Also right along with messages, I'm really excited for this one too, a new fitness app that apparently is completely free. We know Apple's been investing a lot with the Apple Watch. So they're bringing this to Apple TV, iPad, iPhone, and maybe even the Mac and the watch, it sounds like. The watch is gonna be used to track your progress during a workout. And the current activities included are apparently indoor running, cycling, rowing, stretching, core training, strength training, outdoor walking, uh, I don't think I need a tutorial of how to walk outside of Apple, but we have been quarantined for a minute, so maybe I'm wrong. Dance and yoga also coming. I'm excited for this one. It's apparently gonna be called Fit or Fitness, one of those two names. I think it'd be great. I mean, anything to get people up moving more active, it's only gonna make the world a better place. Now we got a list of a lot of miscellaneous things that just fill in different aspects of the operating system. Like first up in the Photos app, you'll be able to submit photos for a shot on iPhone challenge. Apple's working also on instant apps called Clips where you could find a, a QR code somewhere scan it and then actually pull up instantly like a native app interface without having to download anything. This is something Android's had and it's apparently amazing. Alipay is finally gonna be supported in Apple Pay, which is a huge option for a lot of people that live in the East. In Safari, we're getting native translation, which is absolutely amazing. So if you find a website that's in a different language that you don't speak right now, you don't have to go to Google Translate every single time. You'll be able to just like tap on a menu and be able to do it from there. I think that's amazing. The most interesting to me off this list though, and the one that is hard hardest to believe is about Siri and Apple allowing third-party voices to synthesize info, meaning Apple could allow you to download an app and replace Siri's default voice with something else. Now, I know right where we go to. Listen, I want, insert my celebrity here to be able to read me my stuff. I know we all want the Morgan Freeman voice. It's like the oldest one. It's still probably the best one. I don't know if Apple's gonna take it in that direction, although this suggests that that is a possibility. It could very well though be for supporting dialects or languages that Apple Siri doesn't support right now. And then a third party developer could do all the lake work for Apple and then have it supported natively. As we go on to the next section, these are not from as reputable sources, okay? So I wanna leave these at the end. Like there's a reason I've done 100%, 80% or more, just because I, I wanna get you excited about stuff that like really has a possibility of happening. This stuff is still very very possible. These are from sources that do leak iOS stuff from time to time. Just take them with a larger grain of salt. A website by the name of The Verifier has said that Apple is doing widgets this year, that widgets are coming to the iPhone. Now we've seen an image of what these look like. I mean, this is straight from iOS 14. I think this could potentially be third-party widgets in Control Center, but with the swiping page, yeah, it definitely looks like they are on the home screen. And uh, these go further than just what you normally think though. So they, they apparently like expand into block-like things, similar to this concept that we've seen for a very long time. But Apple's also working on live icons. This is something I'm incredibly excited, meaning that just like the clock app spins around subtly, like minute by minute, your weather app could display information without you having to actually go in and tap on it. Live icons in this update sound way more realistic to me than the widgets stuff, but hey, maybe both come, maybe both are skipped. I'm not the most confident in either. Going back to the Messages app, Apple's working on more Animoji slash Memoji options to configure. However, they might also be introducing the ability to add a wallpaper behind your conversation. I think this has existed in WhatsApp and a couple of others for a really long time. Kind of goes along with Apple adding wallpapers to CarPlay, Apple expanding wallpaper support on the iPhone. I mean, hey, why not add it to the Messages app? I'm in a group chat, it could be fun. I mean, people joking around all the time with like setting different backgrounds. It could be a good Time. Siri is said to be getting a huge revamp this year with an updated design and even uh, new voices, which does go along with what was found in the code. So it's be deeper integration inside of the OS. And most importantly, less queries resulting in, I found this on the web for 
Yeah, because nobody wants that. And there might be a new FaceTime augmented reality game, which could be cool. You can put those stickers and, you know, things on your head right now. But if you could play a game over FaceTime, I love FaceTime. And I hope Apple continues to improve the stuff there. And I don't want to say I saved the best for last, because this is a rumor that is not as credible as anything else we've talked about. It's actually the least credible source I'm drawing from. Uh, but apparently the incoming call UI could be fixed, so it's not annoying. There have been a gazillion concepts, you know, as to what this could actually end up looking like, but I think this is a pretty good example. Just make it a banner like everything else. It's annoying that your entire interface could shut down when you have a phone call. That doesn't happen on the Mac. When you get a phone call on your Mac through a handoff, it's just in the top right, like a notification. Why is it that way? Still in 2020 on the iPhone. So those are all the recent rumors. Now let's talk about how you actually get iOS 14 first. All right, it's coming out this year on June 22nd, 2020, probably around 1 or 2 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. The event starts at 10 a.m., it goes for a couple hours. It drops on Apple's developer site shortly after that. So how do you get access to the developer site? The way to guarantee you're gonna get this on day one, if you wanna run the risk of installing it on your daily driver or any device, is to sign up to be a developer. It costs 100 bucks a year. You get instant access for the entire next calendar year to every new beta that drops. So this is if you don't wanna wait for the public beta, you don't wanna go about obtaining the, the build some other sketchy way. This will guarantee that as soon as I get access to it, you're getting access to it as well. If you don't mind waiting a little bit, Apple also has a free public beta that will come out anywhere from a couple days to a couple weeks after developers get access and then the entire public can join it for free. But like I said, if you want access the second it comes out, if you're really excited for it, you get access to watchOS, macOS, tvOS, iOS, you gotta sign up and, and pay to be an Apple developer. I'll leave a link to the page where it'll be available down below as well. It's gonna be on the downloads page. It'll come up there and uh, trust me, I'll be tweeting out, posting content like crazy, like a madman. That's gonna wrap up the video. Thanks for watching guys. Drop a like if you enjoyed. Hit subscribe for more. You're the best. Love you. Giving you an air hug with the whole virus situation and because you're a human being. And I'll see all of you in my next video.